Great to be in God's house. Yes, it is. Great to uh, have an opportunity to preach the Word of God. Uh, thank you for being here and listening to the preaching of God's Word. Amen. <laughs> so we've entitled our message today, Enter Into His Rest. I think you know we're talking about Jesus, right? <laughs> Enter Into His Rest. Uh, you can turn in your Bibles to Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, if you like. And then we'll be going into 2 Thessalonians. These verses in Matthew 11 reveal to us a promise from God and a responsibility on our part. Let's read Matthew 11, verses 28, 29, and 30. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Verse 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your rest. God, we enter into your rest today as we enter into your word god we ask your anointing and blessing over the preaching of your word over the hearing of it and the walking out of the same that we would enter in to the rest that you have for us in jesus name and everybody said amen amen, amen. thank you the promise that we see in these scriptures is his rest our responsibility is threefold. The first responsibility that we have to enter into his rest is to come. To come. The old covenant says to do. The new covenant says to come. So many people are continuing to try to do. So many people are continuing to try to find salvation, freedom, and rest for their souls doing it their way working toward it in their own strength and in their own power. But there is only one way to salvation and freedom and rest, and that is through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Yes. Amen. To come to Him means to trust in Him. The invitation is open to each and every one of us, especially today, to those who are exhausted and burdened down from trying to do things, trying to fix things, trying to fix their life and bring peace and comfort and joy into their life using the world's way or trying it through their own strength, especially to you today, the word of God says, come unto me and I will give you. The second responsibility that we have, that we see in these scripture, is take. Take. When we come to Christ by faith, he gives us his rest. But you and I must take it. That's our responsibility. If I was to give you a dollar bill, and I was to hand out that dollar bill for you and say, here, this is yours, there's something you're going to have to do. <laughs> right? What is it? You're going to have to reach out and take it and receive it unto yourself. That is our responsibility. Yep. It's to take it and to receive it unto ourselves. When we take his yoke, when we enter into his rest, it's a rest of surrender. It's a rest of peace. You see, to, to take his yoke means to become his disciple, to become a follower of Jesus Christ. In taking his yoke, we are surrendering our will to his will. We're, we're surrendering all of our ways to his ways. We become yoked with him, one with him. And then Jesus tells us that my yoke is easy. The word easy means well Fitting. He has just the yoke for you. He has just the cross for you to bear. It's like putting on a 
a, a jacket and saying, oh man, that, that fits really good. I like that. Buttons and everything. Wow, that's pretty good. You know? <laughs> but anyway, moving on. So <laughs> the burden of following his will is no, is no burden. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. The third responsibility we see of ours in this scripture is to learn. To learn. That's a process. As we learn more about him, as we come to know him more and more, we become uh, more at peace. We become more at rest because we're learning of him, of who he is. The invitation is for all to come, take, and learn. Turning our attention to 2 Thessalonians, the church in Thessalonica was going through a lot of persecution, some of which was the reason that the Apostle Paul felt a need to write the second letter to the Thessalonians. The enemy was attacking. They were enduring some hard times. Does anybody in here know what that's like? <laughs> then we're in good company. <laughs> because it's during those hard times, it's during those storms in our life that we need to be encouraged. That we need to encourage ourselves and the Lord and, and come uh, to like-minded people that are yoked with Jesus uh, to be encouraged from them and be lifted up, being around them to enter in to his rest yes. that he has for us. Paul encourages the church in three ways in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. The first way, number one, is he encouraged them with the encouragement of praise. With the encouragement of praise. Sometimes, sometimes, I would even go, to, go ahead and say most of the time, we need to just praise the Lord through our storms. Just keep praising him through the storm. And he'll bring us out of the storm in total freedom. You, you remember in Acts 16, Paul and Silas was in jail, chained in the, in the worst part of prison. What did they do? About midnight, they began to pray. They began to praise and worship the Lord. And then all of a sudden, the, the earth shook and the prison doors flew open and the chains that were binding them and holding them down from being all that God has them to be, they just fell off. And they were set free in Jesus' name. They praised their way through the storm and came out on the other side victorious. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, let's read verses 1, 2, and 3. Paul and Silas and Timothy unto the church of the Thessalonians and to the church at Snook Assembly of God and God our Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll just put that in there. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3, here it is. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meant, or you, you could say as it is right, or rightfully so, he saith. Because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other abounds. Abounds. So first off, we see here in this scripture that Paul is practicing what he preached. He's giving thanks in all things. Prayer changes things, right? We always say that. Yeah. But you know what else changes things? It's giving thanks. A grateful heart, a thankful heart changes things. Yeah. Hallelujah. One of the best weapons we have against the enemy is thanksgiving. Even though Job suffered, he was able to say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. So in our sufferings, in our troubles, in our storms, we continue to give thanks to the Lord. And as we do, as we do, 
God will give us the grace and the strength and the power to walk out whatever it is that we are going through. So what does scripture say that we can be thankful for during our troubles? Well, we see it there in verse 3, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. Because our faith is growing. That's what we can give thanks in our storms and in our troubles because that's why our faith is growing. Faith is like a muscle. It gets stronger as it is exercised. The way a muscle grows, it's what these exercise workout people say, <laughs> is when you exercise, you're actually tearing down the muscle. You're tearing it down, but when your body recovers, the muscle builds back stronger. It builds muscle into those gaps of that torn down muscle, and the muscle gets bigger. You might say it builds back better. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> but that's how faith grows. That's how faith grows. God puts us in situations that tears down our faith so that it can grow back stronger. As believers, we must expect our faith to be tested. To test means to prove by trial. We were talking about this in Sunday school. To prove by trial. When God tests us, his purpose is to prove that our faith is real. That our faith is genuine. And we talked about this in Sunday school. We said, not that God needs to prove it to himself. He already knows everything. He already knows what is genuine or not. What he's trying to do is prove it to us that our faith is real. Yes, yes, that's right. And that our faith is growing stronger. And we can thank God for it. As we go through testings, as we go through trials, as we go through storms, Believing and trusting in God, He is faithful and He brings us through those and our faith grows stronger. It does. What else can we be thankful for through our storms, through our troubles, through our trials? Verse 3 tells us, the charity of each one of you all toward each other abounds. In other words, our faith, our, our faith is growing, our love is increasing. Our love is increasing. When we go through sufferings, storms, trials, we can get selfish. But when we add faith to our trials, when we add faith to our sufferings, yeah. our tests, it produces love when we add faith to it. Paul says it this way in Galatians 5 and 8. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. Here it is, but faith which worketh by love. The only thing that counts, he's saying, is our faith in God. Our faith in God that he is who he says that he is. He can do what he says he can do, and he will do what he says that he will do. That kind of faith expressing itself in love towards one another. As believers, our faith in God produces a love in us. Our faith in God produces a love in us towards each other. Yes. Amen. And when, when we see others struggling, when we see others uh, going through something, we, we want so much for God to, to show himself strong in their life because we know that he is the answer. So, so this love inside of us uh, begins to uh, call us to pray for them, uh, call us to intercede for them. God, show yourself strong. God, show up in their life, God. Hallelujah. Meet every need in their life. This is faith expressing itself in love. And Scripture says that's all that matters. We begin to pray for them. We begin to reach out to them in any way that we can to help them, to help them to overcome and be the overcomers that God has called them to be as well. Loving God, loving others. That's what it's all about. We can give thanks that our faith is growing. We can give thanks that our love is increasing. And in 2 Thessalonians 1 and 4, 
We can be thankful in our troubles that our patience is enduring. 2 Thessalonians 1 and 4, so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and in your tribulations. You see it there. Persecutions, tribulations, trials, storms, troubles that ye endure. The fact that our faith is growing, our love is enduring, will cause our patience to grow. Suffering produces perseverance. We do not become patient by reading a self-help book on seven ways to grow your patience. <laughs> That's not the way our patience grows. Our patience grows through suffering. James said it this way in James 1, verses 2 and 4. He says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. God does not waste the sufferings that we go through. He grows us. He grows our faith. He grows our love. He grows, our, he grows us in his character. He grows us. We must trust God through our troubles that he will give us the strength that we need and he will build his character in us. Right? It's during the tough times. It's during the hard times, during the storms of life that we all need to be encouraged to enter into his rest. We're being encouraged today to enter into his rest. Scripture encourages us with the encouragement of praise, and Scripture encourages, number two, with the encouragement of promise. The encouragement of promise. Paul lists three encouraging promises from God in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. He lists three of them. The first promise that we see is in verse 5. It's the promise of reward. Let's read verse 5. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. What is the kingdom of God? That's heaven. Our reward is heaven. The Lord never promised us an easy life here on this earth. In fact, he taught us that in this life you will have troubles. But he has overcome, and what he has promised us is a reward, and that reward is heaven. Jesus says it this way in Matthew 5, verses 10. He said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Number 12, verse 12, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. The promise of reward. The second promise that we see here in scripture and we see that in verse 6 is the promise of recompense. The promise of recompense. Let's read verse 6. Seeing it as a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yes. To recompense means to Pay back. <laughs> Somebody said it. <laughs> it means to repay. God will pay back trouble to those who trouble us. That's the word of God, if you will. Those that trouble believers do not always receive their punishment here on earth. But God will take care of them in his time. We leave that to the Lord. I mean, remember Pharaoh, he tried to drown all the male babies, but as it turned out, it was he and his entire army 
that wound up drowning in the Red Sea. That's it. Remember Haman? He tried to wipe out all the Jews, but as it turned out, it was he and his sons that were wiped out. Remember the advisors of King Darius forced the king to arrest Daniel and throw him in the lion's den. But as it turns out, it was the king's advisors that were thrown that were right. in the lion's den. So when will he do this? When, when will he repay? When will he recompense those? Second Thessalonians verse 7, let's read that. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Talking about us, rest in him. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Scripture is referring to the final judgment here when Jesus comes back to earth again. His, his judgment will start at the beginning of the tribulation when we are raptured to be with him yeah. in heaven. The final judgment, the final recompense will happen when he comes back to earth again seven years later. 2 Thessalonians verse 8 says, In flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we pray for those that don't know you, God. Yes. Lord, there's still time for them to come to the cross. There's yes. still time for them to yes. believe in you uh, for the forgiveness of their sins. God, there's still time for them to come and take your yoke, God, and learn from you and be saved from this <coughs> wrath. God, save them. Save them. So, in verse 8, we see that God will punish those or he will take vengeance on those that do not obey him. Vengeance is not revenge. The purpose of God's vengeance is to satisfy God's holy law. Revenge is to pacify a grudge that we have with someone. God doesn't have a grudge with anyone. God doesn't have a grudge against sinners. He doesn't. He loves them. He died for them. Jesus died for those that are living in homosexuality. Jesus died for them, and he wants them to come to know him as his Lord, as, as their Lord and Savior. He loves them. He died for them. He draws them to himself by the power of the Holy Spirit. God save them in the name of Jesus. But, but, if a, a sinner says no to the gospel of Jesus Christ, if a sinner says no to the free gift of salvation, the free gift of, of freedom in Jesus Christ, that God has no choice, their sin must be judged. Yes. I mean, I know when I was a kid, my daddy would tell me, you know, if, if you eat that cookie, you're going to get a spanking. Now, y'all know me. What I do? I hate the cookie. <laughs> and I got a spanking. <laughs> so, God says, this is the way it is. This is my law. Sin must be judged. So in 2 Thessalonians verse 9, speaking to the non-believers, speaking to those that trouble believers, he said, whom shall be punished, he said, they'll be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, separated from God forever, forever. The righteous thing for a holy God to do is to judge sin, to judge sinners. He cannot, he cannot, his, his, his holy law has already stated sin must be judged. So it has to be judged. Praise God, our sins were judged at the cross of Calvary. Our sin must be judged. 
Blood must be shed. The shedding of blood has to be shed for my sin. It's either going to be me or it's going to be Jesus. I don't want to die and go to hell for my sin. Why would I do that? Because Jesus died for my sins. Yes. He said, I'll take those sins. I'll take that guilt. I'll take that shame. And, and I'll nail it up to the cross. I'll die for it so that you can go free and live an everlasting life. I'll say yes to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Do you yeah. say yes to the yeah. Lord? Yes. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. Yeah. And I'm thanking for it. <clears throat> We've been forgiven. Amen. Because he loves us so much that he gave his life for us. The third promise that we see is the promise of rest. The promise of rest. We see it in the first part of 2 Thessalonians verses 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. And then we go on to verse 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints, okay? That's his second coming. And to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. We can enter his rest now, today, by believing in him. Yes. We enter into his rest by receiving what he has for us, his rest, by coming to him. One day soon, he'll come, Yes, and he'll take us home yes. to heaven yes. and give rest for us all on the streets of gold in heaven, being with him. Yes. This uh, rest, the word actually means to take the pressure off or lift the burden. It's be the opposite of suffering or the opposite of tribulation. The, the word actually means like releasing a bow string when you pull back the string on a bow it's stressed it's tight but then when you let it go it's at rest that's what the word actually means that we will be at rest right now we're entering into his rest and he gives us the rest that we need but then when we see him as he is in heaven we will enter into an eternal yeah. rest. It's still his rest that he gives us. It's his rest. So, I messed up just a little bit in my notes. That was the third promise was his rest yeah. in that scripture. Did I mess up there? Did you catch that? <laughs> that was the third promise, was the promise of rest. All right? The, the, the third encouragement is the encouragement of prayer. Sorry about that. The encouragement of prayer. So he encourages us with an encouragement of praise, an encouragement of promise, and encouragement of prayer. I have to be careful what I bold in my notes because I see a bold and I think that's my next point. <laughs> but it wasn't yet. Sorry about that. But you still got the meeting anyway, right? <laughs> the encouragement of prayer is our third encouragement that we see in Scripture. We see it in 2 Thessalonians verses 11. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his calling, of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. So what did Paul pray for? That God would count us worthy of his calling. That's a great thing to pray for. <laughs> Lord, that you would count us worthy. God, that you would count us worthy here at Snook Assembly of God Church. Worthy of your calling that you have placed upon this church, God, that we would reach out, that we would touch people, that, God, we'd win the lost, we'd be what you want us to be, that we would be worthy of your calling. He has called us to keep the faith. Keep the faith. 
Paul says, I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. That's what he's called us to do, you and I, to keep the faith. Yeah. Our faith in him, that he is who he says he is. He can do what he says he can do. When we go through these trials, when we go through tests, we don't give up. No, we do not give up. We keep praying. We keep praying and coming to the Lord and, and receiving uh, his power. Amen. Receiving what we need from him through our faith in him. Our faith in him that the plans and the purposes of God will be walked out and worked out in our lives. What we do for God doesn't come from our strength and from our power. It comes from His. It comes from His. And that comes through prayer. That comes through prayer. We're not victorious in our own power and our own strength. It's only through His. Through our faith in Him. Then in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 12, He also prayed that the name of the Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That the name of the Lord would be glorified in us, and that we would be glorified in him. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Yes. He's the one that saves us. He's the one that restores us. He's the one that heals us. Lord, be glorified in our lives that we may be glorified in you. That's our prayer today, God. We receive the blessings, but he receives the glory. Amen. He receives the glory. For our best is yet to come. Romans 8 and 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Let's bow our heads. I ask Tanya to come. Just take a moment and let's just uh, reach out to the Lord. We're preparing ourselves right now for Holy Communion. Let's just prepare ourselves. Let's just thank the Lord right now from the bottom of our hearts to say thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me so that I could live. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for my sin so that I don't have to. Thank you, Jesus. I believe, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. Thank you. I believe that on the third day you rose again. And the same spirit that was exerted to raise you from that grave lives inside of me. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask our ushers to come as we distribute the elements for communion this morning. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs>
words, His love. Amen. His love covering our sin. It's covered. It's under the blood. It's under the blood. Thank you, Jesus. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we thank you for this that represents your body, this bread. We thank you for your body that was broken, your body that went through so much so that we could enter into your rest, so that we could be saved, so that we could be made whole, so that we could be at peace. We thank you so much for what you've done. We do this in remembrance of you. Together, let's take the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had stopped saying, this cup is a New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. <clears throat> oh, we're so grateful. So grateful for the blood. So grateful that you shed your blood for our sins. So thankful you gave your life so that we could live. We believe. So thankful that you went through so much that we could enter into a rest that is so complete. We do today enter into your rest. Lord, all the storms of life, the things that we go through, Lord, we know that you are building your character in us. Thank you for your power that is a work in us. Thank you for the blood. We cover ourselves in your blood today, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We do this today. Drink this cup in remembrance of what you've done, and we say thank you. Together, let's take the cup. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let's just take a moment and just worship the Lord. 